What's up guys, StuffFit here. We have another episode of The Rundown and we are once again graced by Tabor. Thanks for joining us, Tabor. Hey, glad to be here. I, uh, I'm really excited to help uh, kind of go through all this, the data and statistics for the LA tour. Uh, thanks to all the people who are watching. Shout out to StuffFit for getting a thousand subscribers recently. This is really exciting for him and his channel. So uh, if you're not hitting subscribe yet, please do that. Show your appreciation to him and all of the stuff that he does on his channel here. Thanks, Tabor. I appreciate the plug. Yeah, we hit 1,000. So much fun things to come. Uh, you might have seen my post, which you'll be watching yesterday. Full disclosure, our, our we had a crazy schedule this week, so we are recording this very late Friday night. I think it's something around 11 o'clock, but we want to get this to you in, in a timely fashion considering a crazy week. So um, good morning to those of you watching in the morning, uh, good e afternoon, good evening. Uh, we're just so thankful that you guys are, are watching regularly. So uh, if those in the premiere... Throw some hype in the chat. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us, and and uh, it's interesting when you talk about subscribers. Uh, you know, YouTube does a lot of great uh, data crunching. To, I know Tabor, you probably would would go bonkers over their analytics, but um, there's some stats they give you, and it looks like about 45 percent of the people who watch the rundown are not subscribers. So I know it sounds crazy. You know, Stephit, we're we're watching this. We quit saying subscribe. But no, seriously, if you haven't subscribed, it would it would be great if you did. Uh, it'd be helpful, and I'm sure. Me, I think people are watching the the rundown multiple times because we have two thousand, three thousand views, but only a thousand subscribers. So um, that's good. I like I like that. But uh, if you haven't sub hit subscribed, please do that. Uh, please feel free to like as well. That gets in front of more people. But anyway, uh, as always, I like to kind of talk about the rundown, why it exists. But uh, essentially, I was always looking for the same information anytime a tour was released, um, trying to understand um, who got buffed, understand the uh, the general. Um, hierarchy of some of the top uh, items in the game so I can be able to allocate tickets, rubies, coins, and try to invest uh, just a couple hairs ahead of my competition. And thus, the rundown was born. So uh, Tabor was already a couple of steps ahead of me, already crunching this data. So uh, I piggybacked off of a lot of his data and the rundown was born. So we do have a, not just an LA tour, but a baseball tour. Um, Obviously, uh, the LA laps were the, the first one that we had, uh, I guess it was last summer, um, was one of my favorite, it's actually my favorite city track, uh, and then this one came out, and now we're going through a baseball stadium, um, which I absolutely love. So this is my favorite city track, um, it, uh, LA laps, I think this beats the, the first one. I loved, though, going through the half pipe and going on the beach, but this has got to be my favorite. Now, um, I... I know we have a lot of viewers who are not in America. Maybe like, what is baseball? What's going on? You you see this helmet that only has uh, protection on the one ear. When you're facing in the in the batter's box, you're facing the pitcher, so you only need to cover your ear from being hit by a pitch uh, on the side facing the pitcher. So, um, right-handed batters are, are have one on the left ear, and so you can see here, Mario is a, uh, a right-handed batter. Um, so fun fact there, but. Um, Tabor, uh, you're also an American. Um, what does baseball mean to you? I mean, what's uh, and then I'll kind of talk a little bit about what baseball baseball means to me. You see, I'm rocking the Pirates hat. Uh, big big Pirates fan. Um, I grew up playing uh, softball and t-ball and and uh, little league and all these other things. I don't, I don't think I went to quite the extent that you did, Tabor. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with baseball. Yeah, so baseball was kind of like the first main organized sport that I participated in. Um, my parents signed me up for t-ball when I was really young and, uh, and I played that and I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, I moved on to minor league and then little league and then Babe Ruth baseball. And uh, I just, I played all kinds of different positions. I'm a lefty. So I played first base a lot. I also caught and played outfield and, and did a lot of different things. Um, but I pretty much played baseball from the age of five until 15. Uh, once I got into high school, I had to make a choice of whether I was going to play baseball or run track. Both of them were spring sports uh, here in Indiana, where I'm from. So I had to choose one or the other. I was a little bit of a better runner than I was a baseball player. So I decided to go with track and I don't regret it at all. But I do miss baseball. I played in some softball leagues and some different things. But it's just kind of like that all American pastime where you just go out and you play catch with your dad, you know, and you just you just kind of have a nice bonding moment. Uh, but yeah, baseball. It does mean a lot. I, I, uh, I'm a big Chicago Cubs fan, actually. So sorry, stuff it. Uh, but, um, but 2016 was a good year for me. They broke the curse, finally. Uh, not so much since then. But, uh, but yeah, baseball is a, a, a big one in my life. 
Yeah, I think uh, it's an American pastime. It's weird that this tour uh, came right after July 4th, uh, which is uh, uh, Independence Day here in America, where we actually have, like, I was expecting, like, we could have had um, Fast Frank come back because we have, like, literally a hot dog eating competition. Yeah. Um, it's Nathan's hot dog. Like, it is a big deal. Um, but it's it just, it is, it is interesting that they have like these events after a holiday, um, for what it's worth. We going to say something there? Yeah. I was just saying Joey Chestnut. Joey, Joey Chestnut. Chestnut. Yeah. I think you got yes. like 73 hot dogs in, in a minute or something. I don't and know. And buns. Don't forget that. And buns. And oh buns. God. Craziness. Anyway, uh, I think we were talking about baseball. So, um, <laughs> with that being said, um, I, I, it is like an American pastime. It comes now I will say it's, uh, at least here recently, it's kind of, I would say a dying sport. It's one of those sports, though, you know, you go to, you know, you go there, though, to hang, hang out with friends, enjoy some nice weather, you know, uh, drink some beer and some popcorn and pretzels, and, you know, casually watch something. Versus, you know, I, I actually love my favorite sport to watch live, even though I'm an you know, NFL guy. Um, uh, the, watching hockey live is probably my favorite sport to watch live because it's, like, right there. You you don't even have time to, like, eat a pretzel and stuff because you're just, like, in it. Um so from that perspective, you know, baseball is just a little bit more of a casual sport. You know, I, I was kind of talking to with a, a lot of the other uh, players uh, of Mario Kart Tour that are out in Europe and, and kind of comparing baseball to like cricket, whereas like soccer is like the NFL here. Um, soccer being as popular out there in Europe is like it, it is like, you know, God to a lot of these people uh, in the same way that NFL like our weeks revolve around Sundays versus in, in, in baseball, like, I can go a week or two without hearing if we've won or lost. But we do a lot of losing, so, um, at least recently. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not uh, devoted or, or, you know, um, uh, revolve my schedule around that. So it's one of those sports that's just, it's, it's been around for a long time. It's, uh, it's kind of just here, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun, casual American sport. So uh, I don't know if you talked a lot about baseball, but I just wanted to kind of, uh, this is, this is, this, the, the sentimental value of baseball made me go into this pipe way farther than I wanted to. Uh, I really didn't have very many options for carts for week one and ranked. Um, so I went in all the way down to, I think, just five items left to get that, that one cart. Uh, of course, I got suckered into, I think, three or four greens. And then uh, even my high ends were fake pipes. I didn't think I even saw a gold pipe until I was like 20 in, uh, 20 from the bottom. So, um I'm suckered in. I went into this pipe, but I'm. I love these items so much. Uh, I think it's cool. He's got Mario on the back with 64. So cool. So Tabor, talk to us. Just kind of uh, your gut reaction to the new items this tour, including those in the, the week one pipe. Yeah. So it's an interesting mix. Uh, you know, you have Mario Baseball, which is a cool looking character. I really like the the design uh, that they that they went out on him. And then you have Pinch Hitter, which has the baseball helmet on it. And honestly, that's as close as we're going to get to like Yoshi riding a Yoshi cart. This is almost like Mario riding a Mario cart. It just doesn't have Mario's face, it just has his helmet. Uh, and then you have the home field glider, gold home field glider and clean up hitter. Uh, the top three are in pipe one. Gold Home Field Glider will be available during the special pipe coming up that we'll talk about. And the cleanup hitter is a commemorative item that we'll also discuss at a later time. Uh, just looking at them from the raw per, raw data perspective, uh, typically whenever a new item shows up, you're looking at four, that's kind of like average, four level one courses that you can go to right away. Um, this kind of uh, is either an overachiever or underachiever. Mario Baseball is a little bit under that. Uh, it only has three level one uh, courses and two of which are city courses. So in terms of long-term value, that's not a great start. Uh, Pinch Hitter does have five and Home Field Glider also has five, which are great starts. Again, they both only have, they both have two city courses involved, but they've got some other options as well. Uh, Gold Home Field Glider has five, also two city courses and Cleanup Hitter only has three, but again, it's a commemorative item, $4, depending on where you're from, uh, $4 or something equivalent. And so, that only has one uh, level one city course. So, you know, just kind of eyeball on these. You don't, you never know what future value holds, but uh, if you're play to win, excuse me, if you're uh, free to play or gold pass only like I am, then you might kind of need to go into the pipe a little bit. Cause I, I, when I, whenever I opened this app and I saw um, LA laps three, I was without a, uh, without a driver and I was also without a cart. So I was not, in a good place and I've got you know I've got I think I measured it the other day and I've got about 70% of all the drivers 70% of all the cards I'm right around that 70% threshold 
in terms of where I am with my inventory. Uh, but you know, they always choose the most obscure ones to put on the top shelf of new courses. So I didn't have a driver. I got really lucky. I pulled Mario baseball on a freebie. So I was able to get that. Uh, I still don't have a cart though. And I doubt if I'm going to go into this pipe and get one, I'll just try to do my best on the other courses to, to maximize my, yeah, don't go, don't go in for that. No, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'll, I'll, if I have anything, we might look at some of the, the next pipes coming up. But, I mean, these are decent items to show up. They're really cool looking. I really like this. It's kind of weird to see a field as your glider. <laughs> it's kind of weird to see a little miniature thing. It's kind of, it's kind of like one of those things, little bobblehead dolls you put on your dash of your, of your car, but these are just rather your, like, parachutes behind you. I don't know what the reasoning is for that, but, you know, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool looking little, little guards. Whatever their value is is yet to be seen. Yeah, I mean, the style-wise, I, I absolutely love it. I think it's so cool. Uh, it, it definitely startles you the first couple of times. You're like, what's happening? You know, am I getting eaten by a piranha? And, and then you're just realizing that's your, your glider. Um, but I will say, it's cause kind of a, this is a hot topic, too, is, you know, why uh, LA Laps uh, 3 as compared to what would be a subsequent order uh, being number 2. Um, you know, my thought process is that, you know, we're – in the middle of a summer celebration, you have LA, which has a beach. You have, um, you know, obviously uh, a lot of beach and sun during the summer. And so, uh, my hypothesis is, if you want to have a baseball tour in the summer and also be in LA, that they wanted to use the baseball route. And baseball route and the code was was uh, was that third version, and the second version goes somewhere else and and doesn't include baseball. So, in order to have a baseball. Uh, uh, specific tour they decided to use uh three now who knows um could have been Maybe, just like i feel like that yeah what it what it reminds me of is that high school senior uh, prank where you're releasing pig one and pig three and pig four and then no one knows where pig two is and they're just searching 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 and it's not actually there that's kind of like us you know when's it going to happen we don't know we're waiting 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 we're still waiting for berlin byways one and you know it's not coming so whether this is just a big joke that Nintendo pulls on us or whether there's actually some tr strategy in this, we don't know. But it's just kind of an odd thing to look at right off the bat. Yeah, and you know what? We might even see that LA lapse too before we see Amsterdam or, or uh, Bangkok. It's just That's kind of the trend is that they just keep revisiting the same cities. Now, I'm not complaining because I like LA lapse, but uh, just for what it's worth, we might see a lot of that. Um, other than that, I will say... Um, and maybe Tabor, you have a little bit more pulse on the data. Um, but when you have like a driver that comes out like this, like that, would they ever give him, you know, a, a, a cheap, cheap masks, uh, or sorry, um, cheap, cheap Island R or T, you know, they're, they have access to it now. Usually what happens is when they buff them, they, they buff tracks that are part of a tour, you know, that they haven't been introduced to before. And so my guess is, you know, as we start to see, uh, something like a Royal Raceway or something, maybe they get they buff him there. I, I don't see them buffing him in a track that he has right now uh, because that would make too much sense to, you know, give him a fourth track. So, you know, for what it's worth, like a good example would be, you know, this this tour we have a lot of, you know, man, I don't know, Babe, Bowser Santa, and I'm not using a lot of uh, Black Yoshi. So what if he has more overlap with Black Yoshi? Again, we're probably thinking about it way too much but that's kind of what we do Tabor but um do they ever buff things in a tour that they were exposed to already not normally uh usually so I, I did some data crunching the other day and someone was asking about this and we have in the game right now we have 62 different tr course sets which means like for instance LA Laps 3 is considered a set we have the N version the R version the T version the RT version uh, the, that's considered a set. So there's 62 different sets throughout the game. Um, and, um, and so, you know, the cities are not usually repeated or regularly shown unless there's some sort of city tour or special occasion where they bring them back. So, you know, taking all of those out, we're only going to have, you know, we're only going to see um, any specific course set like once every four or five tours. So the fact that Cheap Cheap Island repeated for a second time in a row is great for those people that invested last week, uh, last tour, I'm sorry, that's gonna pay off this tour. But, um, you know, we might not see it again in two months, you know, for two or two or three months. It just depends on how the rotation is of how things go. So it, it just depends. I don't think 
I, I haven't done any data crunching with that, but I wouldn't see Mario Baseball getting, first off, I wouldn't see any of these tracks that he's top shelf in anytime soon. Uh, and if we do see it again, I don't think he'd be buffed in any of those. It's going to usually be some new course type that that comes back around that they start introducing and adding things to. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, good. So those are the new items. Uh, obviously, uh, aesthetically, I'm a huge fan of all of them. Um, as for the non-spotlight drivers, uh, nothing new there. Um, as well as also for the carts, nothing new with uh, the, the carts when it comes to the non-spotlight items. And last but not least, the same with the glider. So uh, this has probably been the what, third tour or so that they haven't added anything new. I'm good with that. Uh, I, I kind of like having the consistency. I mean, when they add new ones in there, that's like that. I think everyone wins because they're items that we haven't had access to. But, you know, um, it, at this point in time, at least for, for my consistency and just kind of keeping... Uh, there was a while there where the, things were kind of flowing in, flowing out. They were forgetting stuff and just it's... It's nice now we have a, probably a pretty um, consistent view of what's what's going to be in those pipes. Um, as for the week two pipe, this is an interesting pipe. Uh, it's going to look like it's uh, nine high ends with six spotlights. So the six spotlights you see here on the screen, in addition to a one one one, a one driver, one cart, one glider from those um, non spotlights I just showed. Now, I think for this perspective, like uh, this isn't, if you don't have Mario Sunshine, I know that the Mario pipe that we that he was in um, last wasn't, uh, it was, you know, he wasn't a spotlight, so it was hard to try to get him. You know, he was in with a bunch of other Marios. So this one, if you if you want him, he is a spotlight in there. Um, I think we've, we've all kind of pulled a, a Funky here and there, um, just being a 100 pipe. I love Funky. Um, I think just because he's, he's buff and he looks cool. I mean, he's probably the coolest driver um, but you know, I, I have him and he's close to, to level seven. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't hurt for me to pull him again, but I'm in no rush. I mean, this game is, he's going to be a seven one day. Um, but the one item I don't have here, this jet cruiser, I would be interested in, in getting that. I mean, I don't have any of these items at level seven, so I might go into this pipe a little bit more. Um, uh, one thing, one thing to kind of point out the jet cruiser, when I did the hitbox, uh, it actually is not that big. You think, you know, Hey, I got a speedboat, like, a this must be pretty big. I mean, those are usually bigger than a go-kart. Um, it's actually pretty pretty narrow versus the Surf Sailor. Uh, it looks like, especially in this picture, like it's a really tiny cart, but it's actually pretty wide and pretty long and actually has one of the, the best hitboxes. Um, I think part of, part of it is, you know, you're looking at these pictures and they're either zooming in if it's a small cart or, there's, or zooming out if it's really... So I'll, honestly, most of these pictures I have like a reverse of what they really are. Um, which I think is really interesting. But overall, this is probably a pipe I'll go into a little bit, but um, I think the, the casual player should probably save for a potential anniversary or even just next tour. I mean, we you remember with the Ninja, um, the way that they finished off that uh, that spring trifecta. Um, who knows, maybe next tour could be really big when it comes to the, the pipes there. But Tabor, what do you think about this week two pipe? Are you pulling? Uh, week two, no, probably not. I mean, depending on my, my Ruby situation at the end, I might do like a YOLO 10 pull and see what I get because I've usually had pretty good luck just doing a single 10 pull on a nine sp or on a nine high end uh, pipe. Um, but I mean, there's quite a few things that I don't have. I actually don't have Mario Sunshine. I don't have Funky Kong, believe it or not. I don't have Jet Cruiser. I don't have Star Spangled Glider. Um, I think I have the other two. So I don't know, maybe, but if I don't, it's it's. I don't. I already looked ahead to week two ranked, and I've got top shelf on every course there, so I don't think there's a necessity. Good man. Well, uh, the other pipe we have, the last one we haven't talked about, is an interesting one. It's the it's the gold pipe. Now, anytime we have a gold pipe, it's it is a uh, it is grabbing your attention. It is pulling you in. It is like the sirens singing their song, um, <laughs> tempting you to pull. Um, Tabor, what's your thoughts on the gold pipe right off the bat? So the interesting thing about this is that there's 15 different high ends available. And I know they're not all guaranteed, but there's 15. And that just seems like a lot for a 50 pipe. So I know, uh, you know, there's a lot of different predictions out there of what it's going to be. It all Again, it has those, it has those famous words of there in the spotlight. What does that mean? And recently, honestly, recently there has been more than one. Uh, but the one time that they fooled us is when Go uh, 
King Bomb Bomb Gold was available, and they said there and only, and he was the only spotlight. And he is again in this in this uh, in this pipe. So I don't know. It just seems like it'd be, um, you know, the the new the new item is the Gold Home Field Glider. So I do see that being a spotlight on here, a guaranteed way to get that. And then after that, I just I'm not I'm not convinced that it'd be a one one one. It just seems like only one option of five different cart or excuse me five different drivers five different carts five different gliders it just seems it seems like excessive and i don't know if if it'd be higher than that but if you go any higher than that and that ends up really raising the percentage for high end so i almost can see if the gold high high field excuse me if the gold home field glider is a spotlight i almost almost see it being like a two two one um to make that work that would end up being like a 12 percent high end odds which is really high but in the past gold pipes have been a little bit more generous so i don't know uh we'll just have to kind of see but really none of these really stand out um i obviously if you didn't get king bomb on gold um then you, this is your opportunity to be able to possibly get him um king boo gold is also a coin boxer in case you don't have that guy the carts and gliders i mean there's some good value on some of these but nothing that's like you nothing that's is like a hundred percent pull you have to pull for this so i don't know it, it just kind of uh, is a hit or miss i really need to see the odds and the, and the makeup before i can decide <laughs> what I'm, I'm going to do personally yeah the odds are going to be they're going to be interesting uh, my my guess is i always try to set the bar really really low um and that way if it is if it is better now i, I do feel that when i do that and then the odds are better it makes it more tempting because everyone had those bar, that bar low and that and it's my fault, and I feel I feel bad that uh, people pull on a pipe that they didn't need to. But I mean, ultimately, um, this is a this is a great pipe. I, I I have no problem if someone wants to pull on this. Uh, I mean, for myself and, and a lot of these whales, they've they have most of these coin boxers at level seven. A lot of these coin gliders at level seven. Um, so for me, really, the only thing I would be going in for would be shy guy gold and uh, the gold swooper, and then some of these cards and. Really, none of these cards are like has ever even come close to our top ten. So I don't. To to me, it's this is uh, this is one I I'm gonna be. I might go in doing a ten pull or twenty pull or something like that just to maybe get the glider and then I'm getting out of there. I'm not doing anything more in this pipe. This is not to me a a, a pipe that I'm looking at. Now you make a couple good points. Um, gold pipes tend to be a little bit more attractive. Uh, one and two. Um, you have just so many items here that it maybe would be like uh, they could do two more spotlights. So it could be a spotlight of the this new glider, and then also maybe a uh, dry bound dry Bowser gold, and maybe one of the carts, um, or maybe they just I, I don't know what they do. But to be honest with you, they they might make it a little bit more attractive. And then you know you saw the special pipe last time. You know we had. You know, Nabbit and, and uh, King Bob uh, spotlights in addition to uh, uh, Bowser Jr. To, to me, anytime you have drivers in a 50 pipe, that's always attractive. I mean, I think this is a solid pipe. I mean, I, I have no problem with someone pulling on this. Now, I will say, sometimes what they do is they give you these really tempting uh, 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 pipes just like this. At the same point in time, they give you terrible packs. And then the following tour, they give you good packs when there's terrible pipes and that's just kind of what they do is and especially as they're leading up to something big uh or an even uh even better pipe they have these like you know grab type of pipes that just drain your rubies and then you're just like oh geez now i have to get i have to uh you know try to get some kind of ruby action in order for me to be able to pull something when you really need it so my advice would be probably if, if you don't if you don't have these items go ahead and pull um, this is not one I would highly recommend pulling, just knowing that we, we have something going on next tour. It could be big, maybe it's not, um, but then we have, definitely have the anniversary, and the anniversary is going to be big. Um, so my, my advice would be, you know, get something if you need it, otherwise try to stay away. Yeah, for those people who are either free to play or gold pass only, none of these pipes are too very exciting so i would recommend saving your rubies because a couple things to keep in mind is that this right now is the 48th tour of the game which means after the summer celebration tour is over we're going to hit the 50th tour of the game and whether they do something special to commemorate that or not who knows but you do want to make sure that you're ready for that and then two tours after that is our 
uh, anniversary. It, well, it might not be the 52nd tour. They might end up making it be the 53rd. When they did the first anniversary, everybody was all hyped up, and then they ended up like delaying it a couple a couple weeks or a couple tours, and it was all kind of weird. We didn't know if it was going to happen or not. So who knows? But they've had plenty of time to think about it, and we know that we're hyped up. We were hyped up for the one-year anniversary. We were hyped up for the one-and-a-half-year anniversary, and we're hoping that you know the two-year anniversary comes at a respectable time of when we're expecting it but who knows what nintendo does but save your rubies I, that's my recommendation too uh, expect the unexpected right <laughs> um as was leading to the, the the packs this tour are, are not the best um i've seen much better so for me you know this was uh uh relatively uneventful the pink old peach many people already have or already have a level seven um i knew coming out of uh uh, moving from level seven when or six to seven when that was released, um, I just said I'm not I'm not putting any tickets on her because I know the game is going to take her to seven, and and it's been seven for a couple of tours and I'm I'm thankful I never used any any uh, any tickets on her. You'll get her probably to seven um, just from pulling her in hundred pipes and whatnot. But um, you know she's she's great value if you don't have if you're if you have her at six and you need her for ranked or something else and you're just like you know one or two away from getting her to seven. I mean, go for it. I mean, it's rare that they have a driver in these 45 Ruby packs, so um, that's always good. And, and honestly, uh, I know most a lot of people might do auto uh, auto mode, but I'm always running low on these driver like point tickets too, especially when you're thinking about um, last week us getting these cap tickets. Uh, I mean, I had to, to grind to get some of these um, all the way to their full base points. And then the other one this week, I, I kind of uh, have a little too much fun with this one, but... I mean, if you got this 90 pack, you are a whale. Uh, I just kind of put on there, you're a whale if you didn't vomit seeing this pack. It is a terrible pack. I mean, like the, I, I actually like the Streamliner, it's fine. Um, but uh, Party Time Toad, like no, one's, no one should be using Party Time Toad on that track unless you <clears throat> just don't have like a, the, you know, the coin box driver. You don't have, I mean, I just don't, there's nothing about that. I mean, the Streamliner is fine. Um, just uh, no i mean it was in a it was in a special pipe you know you spotlighted you know you should if you wanted that like if you actually really like that cart you probably already have it uh it's definitely not worth getting the 90 rubies with it uh, as for the week two yeah i mean i i personally love this star spangled flyer because i'm you know, i'm american and it looks awesome it is the most like like American thing, like it, we're just sometimes very obnoxiously over the top with our stars and stripes, but that's because it's awesome. Um, we're very, very proud of it. So for me, um, I, I really like the look, but when it comes to uselessness, I, I, th I feel like it's like right there, down there with the, the carb cart as just like one of those cards that doesn't see a lot of value. Um, I, 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 I've had it at, I think at level three and I don't think I've ever used it. So, um, I just put it as, as probably a dud there or a meh at best. Um, and then <laughs> I just kind of put it, uh, this, this 90 pack with not complete garbage, which is, I think is a compliment. Um, and that you have this uh, lucky seven driver, um, which is good. And then the, uh, from what I've heard, the orange streamliner has slightly better um, value than this, uh, the decal streamliner. So for, for what it's worth, you got those thing, two things going for you, but these are not great packs in general. Um, so you know, if you are you know getting packs like uh, this one, this may not be. This might be a hard pass for some players. Um, I know from talking with a lot of whales, they're toning down um, the packs that they're getting as uh, as the year has gone on, just because we they, they're already hitting the plateau of level seven, and they're not always needing the stuff that's in them. Uh, I know for myself. Yeah, I, I probably won't get uh, half of these. So that's that's my perspective. And then when we look at the three items that we have to kind of make decisions on, the commemorative item, the premium challenge, and the tier shop, we have kind of different perspectives. We have the premium challenge and the tier shop, both items that have been around for a very long time. You probably have it. You probably already have it at a, you know, a level three plus. Um, you know, I, I have them at both at seven, so they're like not that interesting to me. But this commemorative item for me, I mean, again, I, I don't want to take anything away from them. The Star Shoot's obviously a former top 10. Um, uh, this Crimson Crane, great for multiplayer. Uh, a, a very pretty decent coverage uh, glider. But this commemorative item, it, I love it. Um, a lot of people who love Mini Turbo Plus, it's going to be a great card for you because of that. Um, it's got a cool look to it, of course. 
And then any of these commemorative items, um, it's especially when they're new, you don't have them, so you're, uh, it's, it gives you some coverage at, at times, and it's always nice to have. They, they, Nintendo does a, usually a good job of giving it value, but um, Tabor, you might probably have more uh, feedback on uh, these three bottom ones, but what's your what's your uh, takeaways on some of these items? Uh, so, yeah, Pingirl Peach is very valuable, so if you're, you're going to spend money, that's a good one to do, um, especially... Uh, since it's one of the cheaper packs. And just to kind of give you some stats, Star Spangled Flyer, I have it ranked 60, no, I'm sorry, I have it ranked 101st of carts, so not good value. Um, the, the Streamliners, I actually have the Decal Streamliner ranked 64th and the Orange Streamliner ranked 81st. Um, so okay. still not high either way. Um, and then, uh, you know, the commemorative glider is, a, or excuse me, the cam- commemorative cart is a, is a new one. That's the pinch hitter one. Uh, and, you know, it's only $4 if you're in the USA or equivalent, if you're somewhere else. And so, I mean, it's it's worth it. I always usually spend the money to get something that's brand new. And if I don't usually spend if it's over five. If anything's over five, I just, I hold off and I don't do it. But it's five or less. I don't have a problem with spending that. Um, I'm staying away from the premium challenge, although there's nothing wrong with the star shoot i just have it already at level seven and so I, there's no need for me to do that um the commemorative cart again who knows the value but it's something new and sometimes they end up throwing that as the top shelf of a new course uh, so it's just good to kind of cover your bases and i was just checking on the crimson crane uh, the crimson crane has actually been available in the tier shop three times now so you've had an opportunity to already buy it if you haven't had if you don't have it yet um for me, my, again, gold pass only, my uh, coins are pretty limited, and I always want them available to buy some tickets in the daily selects if possible. So I only buy things from the tier shop if I don't own it already. I don't I don't typically buy it to level it up unless it's going to really help me in a ranked or multiple ranked courses. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a pass this week on, uh, on the tier shop for Crimson Crane at least. But I mean... Again, all of these are have some value to it. They're all studs, like you had mentioned. So I think the bottom ones are are a good choice. Um, it's kind of weird to see a star shoot glider, such an old glider, in the premium challenge. It was kind of a turnoff to me personally. But for those people that have not had a chance to get that or looking to level it up, it's a great idea to be able to spend the five bucks to do that. Yeah, you know what? I think I do think that Nintendo is trying to help out those uh, those people who have have been, I guess, new to the game. Um, I think. You know uh, us in the discords and and uh, uh, us in the community that's that, that interacts with each other. You know you see the same faces. We've been around for a long period of time, but there are a lot of new players. It's crazy to see um, that that new people are. I mean, uh, Nintendo is constantly um, putting the app out there in the app store, and people there are new players every single every single day. And I hope hope they see this channel. Hope they 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 uh, yeah, log on to discords. We'll be getting our Discord here soon. That's exciting. Uh, members only, but. Um, I do think it, they help it help them out. I mean, there's there's some immediate coverage that a new player would get by getting some of these premium challenge. And I really, I mean, from that perspective, it, I think that's that's the case with a lot of these packs. And I think that's one of the, one of the reasons why the the wells are taming down a little bit is, um, yeah, a lot of these packs are are going to help the player that is relatively new and trying to catch up. And those whales who are trying to get an edge, they don't really try to help us too much. That's uh. Yeah, for me, I mean, I've gotten this uh, classic Luigi a couple times uh, from from Pax, and and he's slowly getting there. And I, I to be honest, with you, I, don't, I I wish I was using him more often. Uh, there might have been two or three tracks that uh, he would have came in handy. But again, they're trying. I think they're trying to help out the new uh, the the newer players. I'm fine with that. I think that's smart. All right, so we have a little interesting topic here. We uh, probably going to pull this apart. Um, and, and take us probably 10 minutes to do so, but we have some data mining. So uh, first we'll kind of talk left to right. Uh, we have this Mario versus Peach tour and they're going to announce, it looks like on Monday uh, about the tour and, and uh, who's on which team or, or maybe they just uh, announced that uh, the rally is coming up. Uh, and then Thursday the 22nd, they'll talk about um, here are the team members for Mario and then it looks like they, they might to maybe both teammate uh, teams at that point, and then uh, Monday the twenty sixth, um, they'll talk a little bit more about um, the items you can get in that in that tour. So it's interesting. I think we were anticipating a versus tour, but that's why the, this information is leaked is because they'll start to release this information in the next couple of days. 
Um, you know, we were expecting a versus tour. I was hoping uh, Wario versus Luigi. I even watched uh, Frenzy, Fre uh, uh, Frenzy and Friends or Frenzy Friends. Um, they were talking a little bit about uh, on the scoreboard in the stadium how it looks like it says Mario versus Wario. Uh, and uh, so I think there was even some temptation that that might be one. Mario versus Peach can be tough, man. Uh, I noticed you're working, wearing a Peach shirt here, Tabor. Uh, does that mean you're going to be pick, picking team, team Peach? Um, no, it's just one of the ones. So I'm an Ultimate Frisbee player, and we had a... We had a um... We had a league where we had four teams, and each team did like a Nintendo theme. And so I would, I ended up being on Team Peach, and there was a little frisbee in her hand. If you couldn't tell, so this is cool. Shout out to Sammy D, who also played some <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee as well. Uh, no, it's just one of those things. But it's just kind of weird to already have two characters that were already in a previous Versus Tour before. So you know, it's just kind of weird. I, I'm not a fan of city tours mostly. I did like the city course though this time, so that was kind of a bonus. And I'm definitely not a fan of a versus tour. So we'll get through it. It's the end of the summer celebration. I'm just hoping that the rewards and the different things that they give or that they have available to the players kind of um, makes up for that. Um, but you got those tokens to worry about to try to get all those. And, and honestly, and if you, for those people that stress over which team to pick, because really you have to decide that when you open the game on the very first day of this tour, don't stress. You're going to get all your tokens. At the very minimum, you're going to get either 10 or 15 rubies. So it's not like a deal breaker here. It's not going to break your back of, of, of picking the wrong teams. So just pick something. You're going to end up doing fine. You're going to get all your tokens as long as you grind a little bit. Um, but what's worked for me is that whichever one is the most popular that's the one that's going to get the most tokens and that's the one that's going to get the higher one so i don't necessarily have allegiance anywhere i just kind of pick the one that most people are going with and go and going from there so i'm not trying to over overthink it at all yeah it's certainly a good point there um i remember asking you last tour uh if you had to pick between a city tour and a versus tour which one would you pick and, and you were uh you were frustrated there you got both. Look at you, Tabor. You, you, you won the lottery That's there. That's worse. That's worse. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Um, and uh, moving on. And, and just, you know, we mentioned uh, Frenzy Friends, and we also mentioned Sammy D. Feel free to definitely uh, check the, both of those channels out. Um, I love watching them. They're both fun, um, both Cart Life and also Frenzy Friends. Um, September update. So we also have an update coming, a big update in September. That's probably right around that... Um, uh, for, for that anniversary, but you know, this is, Tabor, you're anticipating this to be a massive update. I am. So we had uh, we had a pretty big update on the 2.9.0 when it came around, and then uh, we had a little bit of an update on the 2.9.1, which is where we are now. And so I'm kind of anticipating this to be the 3.0.0. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to be what's going to be coming, but I see whenever it jumps up a whole. 10th or whatever it would end up being uh it ends up being a little bit more of what we were uh hoping to see some more changes some more um, additions to the game and i don't know nintendo in the past has been pretty notorious about adding things to the game that no one's asked for and not addressing the issues that everybody's asking for so whether that continues to go uh you know for this next update who knows i do find it interesting that they're kind of like they're gonna make some devices obsolete I don't know exactly what that means in terms of the update, whether it's going to have some enhancements or it needs a certain, uh, you know, 64 bit compared to a 32 bit of what, you know, what they're going to be have it made available for us. If they're completely changing the game, like a drastic overhaul or whether it's just a few additions here and there, who knows, maybe we'll get some clues coming further. Um, I do know, as you can see here on this, one of the badges that were available was this uh, one with balloons. And that was from the, you know, the initial Mario Kart Tour SNES had the battle mode available, and so whether that's there, and I know there's some coding down there that talks about battle as well. We were, I was talking to Studfit about this before we started recording, and I think that some of the metagamers like we are and some of the other ones are, we tend to just look at every little detail in the game and speculate that this means something. You know, this must mean that this must be a prediction of what's going to be coming because they're going to drop us little breadcrumbs and little clues, and whether that's true or not, or whether we're just overanalyzing we don't know but um but i know that there's there's a lot of things in the code that have been around for a long 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 time that have not yet shown up so 
just because we have some code in there that says battle doesn't mean we're going to see it next door or during the, the September update or whatever's going on. But anyway, any update is always interesting to see what they do, whether it's just a few tweaks. But with this making some devices obsolete, I see it being pretty major. And, uh, and I'm curious on what this is going to end up being. And hopefully they'll have some hints dropped along the way as September nears. Yeah, um, kind of starting that point, uh, I suspect that, I mean, I always like the updates. They they usually, when they give us something that we weren't expecting, I'd say 50% of the time, it's like, that's awesome. I'm so glad you started giving us more rubies or you started doing this. Um, and then there's also times where you're just like, like landscape mode, really? Like what's, go what's going on here? But um, I do suspect it's big. Um, in fact, one of the, the uh, advices I would give to you for this tour is it could be potentially a level 200. Um, and I always, anytime we're talking about level 200, I mean, we, I mean, we speculate almost every tour. Hey, this could be whatever. The, but the main reason I'm telling you this now is we are in a city tour. Uh, so these city tracks only come back every so often. So I, my recommendation would be get on that 200 cc's. It's not fun, but just, just get it and grind it and get those levels now while we're in LA Laps 3. We may not see LA Laps 3 in a long time, if ever. So... Um, go ahead and get those levels in now. That would be my point of advice for those who aren't, you know, getting multiplayer things and, and uh, grinding ACR. I'm kind of like lightly grinding for top 10. I don't have very much time at all, but uh, I've filled out the spreadsheet. I'm like getting within 5,000 points of what uh, my predicted max is based on the ACR spreadsheet, which uh, is in the link below. Um, but yeah, Tabor, you're right. I mean, we love to speculate. That's one of the reasons why... Uh, I have an episode uh, is is part of part of the fun of it is speculating. I know uh, I watched um, Shy Guy Cart his uh, his speculation video here. Uh, some a great, definitely check out his channel too. I um, mean, uh, I mean, really, I think everyone should be supporting everyone in the in the community. But um, speculating is fun. It's it's such a uh, good piece of um, conversation. I will say, when it comes to battle mode, um, comparatively, I'm not as excited. I'm not as thrilled. The, the reason being is we saw an Amsterdam uh, Sprite logo thing here. We've seen codes that talk about the um, the TikTok or whatever it's called, that uh, the car that's out there. I, to be honest with you, when, it, when I see this, it's nice to know what's in there. And there's even, as you alluded on our pre-show meeting, there's code in there from when it first was released that still isn't out there. So um, I'm not getting too excited about the battle mode. I think the September update is much, much more um, something we should be focusing in on. Yeah, and just to give you a quick, uh, quick, quick dates. Level 150 was introduced during the cooking tour, which was June of 2020. So if we have a level 200, this will be a whole 15 months after 150 was uh, was introduced, and we're not guaranteed that 200 is going to show up. Uh, but I just know we've had 15 months to grind and get player level points and get that up because whether you know it or not, that is being added to you in the background. Even if you're at level 150, as you continue to grind courses that you don't have maxed out yet, it's adding on to it. So if we ever get to a level 200, you're going to see all the jumps that you've made in the past 15 months um, ever since you got it to level 150. Just add, 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 add. So don't think you're going to have to start at level 150 if a level 200 is, uh, is ends up coming around. Uh, it's going to add to it, and you'll maybe you'll get up to 160 all of a sudden and start there. Maybe you'll jump up to 180. It just depends on how much you've been grinding over the last 15 months. And who knows? Maybe Nintendo can just scrap that uh, the way that they've been doing it too. Who know, who knows? But um, yeah, I just assume people know uh, what I mean when I'm saying grinding levels, but. Yeah, you'll see a little a little you know jump in in visually. I don't. I'm trying to remember if it makes a sound. I don't play with sound on, but um, it does not. It does not show you that it's going up. It just kind of just like blinks. So, for what it's worth, um, yeah, definitely use it while we're in a city. Uh, I think that's wise advice for anyone who takes meta level strategy, um, pretty seriously. Which of course you as a viewer probably are doing. Um, so Tabor, talk to us a little bit about these drivers. They got yeah, so buffed. Yep. One of the things we do on Rundown is we talk about which drivers, carts, and gliders have gotten extra courses added to them. Now, keep in mind, this is only top shelf. There's also a lot of drivers, carts, and gliders that get added middle shelf uh, courses to them as well. That is not something I keep track of. I probably should, but I already have my hands full with enough data that I have, so I'm fine with just looking at the ones that are most people care about, which is top shelf. 
So really excited to see Luigi Luigi Painter get five buffs this tour, which is really really good. I don't think we've seen a five on here for for quite a few tours on here uh, on any of the buffs. So it's exciting to see, and it, there is one city, but there's plenty of non-city courses that were added to him. So that's really exciting. He's already up to uh, looks like eighteen total courses, and really this is real. This is what I typically have been seeing whenever I've been tracking these. Those items that were most recently introduced get a couple things added to it but it's ones from two tours ago that get the most and so it's almost kind of like they're going back two tours and then they're adding to that and so i wouldn't expect to see a lot of things being added to mario baseball next tour but the tour after that i think mario baseball would get quite a few uh so that's just kind of what the pattern has been whether that keeps up or not who knows uh, those that got three buffs for Pauline Rose and Blue Koopa Free Running. Blue Koopa Free Running is now up to eight. Pauline Rose is up to 24 total tracks, six of them being cities. Uh, there were uh, 11 items that got two buffs Baby Mario Koala, Birdo Black, Builder Toadette, Daisy Swimwear, Shy Guy Ninja now has a total of 25. Uh, it got one wow. city course added to it and one non city course. Mario Racing, Mario Sunshine, Mario Tuxedo got two more, which is exciting for those coin box uh, lovers out there. And Green Shy Guy. Again, Green Shy Guy was a surprise. I think I predicted last tour that Blue Yoshi and Green Shy Guy will not get any more buffs because they're pretty much at their max. And I was You were half right. I was half right. Blue Yoshi didn't, but Green Shy Guy did get one more, excuse me, two more added to it. It now has a total of 16 total courses, which is the most of any of the super drivers. Wow. Um, and then we had uh, a few of them that just got one. Cat Peach, Cat Toad, both those are hand in hand. Uh, and by the way, their rankings are literally right next to each other. Cat, Cat Peach is just one rank higher than what Cat Toad is. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. and SNES. Fire Rosalina Mario Musician, which is an older driver, one of the oldest ones, and it finally got another buff. It was a city, though. Uh, Rosalina Swimwear, Toadette Explorer, White Yoshi, and Yoshi Reindeer, which is another one of the uh, older drivers, but it got a city to get city buff as well. It's sitting at 21 courses, but again, eight of them are are our cities. So some good ones that stand out to me at least. Again, I really love the the love they gave Lu Luigi Painter, uh, Mario Tuxedo. A lot of people love seeing the the non city courses being added to this one, which is exciting. Uh, Mario Sunshine, I know a lot of people love using him, but he did get two city tours. So other than this tour, he's not going to really help you. It's not, it's not really going to help you uh, later on. Shy Guy Ninja was exciting for a lot of people. Uh, I know a lot of people have a, a good uh, love of that and devotion. I'm excited to see him um, continue to move up the ranks. Um, but other than that, you know, this just some some good drivers. Got a lot of buffs. Yeah, I mean, the, the two that obviously stand out is Luigi Painter uh, getting five. That's a lot. Only one of those being a city. You nailed that. Um, and then Shiga Ninja, 25 tracks. How crazy is that? I mean, he is a force to be reckoned with. And then the other the other things to mention is um, he's, we've seen, and I think unlike any other tour we've or set of tours, We've seen the same drivers being top shelf on a new track. I mean, we're talking about this, you know, Pauline Rose. We're talking about uh, Ko Koala Boy. We're talking Bird, about Birdo Black. Birdo Black. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these these we've seen them and seen them and seen them and see it. And I think we've even seen um, you know, these two different uh, uh, cat uh, between Todd and and uh, Peach. I mean, it's just it's interesting to see how they keep keep doing it. It's uh, these obscure obscure drivers, but. I mean, they're there. Um, thankfully, they, they always throw in somebody to, to help the whales out. For me, it's been this DK Jr. But um, you notice there, everyone who got buffed won, uh, just all got a city. So it's kind of a th throwaway, a gimme. But it's just, it's just so crazy to see how often someone like Pauline Rose has been a part of ranked. Um, kudos to her, you know, good for her. Um, but I, I wouldn't... I, those are the only times you're going to use these drivers, to, in my opinion, is when they have a new track and you don't have anything else on it. So um, if you got one of them, they've been coming in clutch and um, Nintendo's been helping you out. But I mean, oh, overall, it's uh, um, an interesting set, interesting set of continuously buffed drivers there. As for the carts, we have, of course, this uh, Sunny Surf Sailor, uh, uh, as you know, came with the, the Daisy Swimwear. Just in last tour, I got four, 
Uh, and then we have two cards that got three. We have the Lime Tea Coop and the Painster. Obviously came from the Paris Tour. Um, you know, both of them have very similar stats in that they uh, have 11 non-city tracks, four cities there. Um, but nice to see them get the buff. Um, there are a total of five carts that got two buffs there. The Mark II, which now up to 18 non-city tracks, two cities. You got the Inferno Flyer the for 16 non-city, one city. You get the Grand Bad Wagon with 14, uh, two cities. The Jade Hot Rod, which uh, was a f uh, former top 10, a, a one that we were all keeping our eye on. Um, got these two buffs to make it 18 tracks. Still number 13 on our list. Uh, with three cities there, and then Blue Turbo Birdo, or sorry, two Blue, tur that's actually sounded pretty fun to say, but uh, Blue Turbo Yoshi with five non-cities, three cities. And then we have a lot of cards get one buff. Uh, the one making the list here at the very top, you see the Black Turbo Birdo, which um, I, I kind of alluded to, that was actually the one that I decided to put some tickets in. Mainly because it's on the list, and I actually looked at how many total tracks it has, and I was blown away. I did not realize that it had 20 non-city tracks, three cities. It has obviously been on our top 10 for now our second tour. Uh, actually, I think two or three tours, but um, but now it's it's uh, number six. It's uh, phenomenal to see it up that high. Um, Cactice at 15 non-cities, three cities. And then you have the Cheap Snorkel. Interesting one there with 18 non-cities three cities there crimson hot rod the uh that was the commemorative item one uh with 20 actually more more uh tracks and less city tracks than its jabe version jade version but hasn't been very involved in ranked and it's one of the reasons why uh, it was hurt by uh the top 10 that's why it's not number you know 13 or 14 or maybe even you know 12 uh based on having 20 non-cities uh, and er, yeah 20 non-cities and obviously zero cities uh, Green Apple card, uh, one that's been around for a long time. Uh, got one buff to be 15. You got the Jet Cruiser at 17, four cities. These number of cities there for, but it came out in Sydney, so that makes sense. You got the Orange Streamliner at 14 non-cities, five cities. Man, that's uh, surprisingly low in my opinion, but uh, five cities is probably why. Um, got the Pink Dozer. Uh, it's nice to see the Dozers getting some buffs. The only one of the three, um, but it has now 13 um, non-city tracks, two city tracks. You have the Radish Rider at 13 whole city, uh, non-city tracks with one city. Interesting little there. And then the Rombie Runner, a uh, very popular fan favorite at 19 non-cities, one city, number 10 on our list, and definitely a fan favorite. Um, we have the Rose Taxi at 17 non-cities, four cities. Uh, the Sakura Quickshaw at 18 non-cities, two cities. Star Spangled Flyers, we talked about, only 10 non-cities. So much city action. Literally, uh, geez, what, like, looks like, you know, 40% of its uh, um, tracks are going to be cities. That's crazy. Surf Sailor up to 12. That's not uh, that's very high, obviously, for uh, a card that's been over, I guess, what now, 13 months. Um, only 12 non-cities, three cities there. Uh, the White Turbo Yoshi, those who went into that pipe, are rewarded with 16 non-cities, four cities there. And then the Wild Wing, one that's been all around for a very, very long time. The OG of the Wings, uh, 14 non-cities, four cities. Um, Tabor, anything stand out? No. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a whole lot of, I mean, there, there's some good ones on here, some ones that I think some people were excited to see about, but nothing... Uh, I don't think there's anything too too crazy going on here. You want to add anything about the the hop rods? Um, I know they jumped up really really high into uh, 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 top fifteen very quickly, and have since kind of fizzled out a little bit. But um, I just thought it was interesting that the crimson actually had more more tracks. Something I didn't know. Yeah, so I was trying to um, look at these. I have yeah, I have the jade at thirteen, and then I have the crimson one. Eighteen. Um, the biggest thing that stands out for both of those is that um, the crimson or the jade is a little bit better in terms of the course coverage. Uh, and that's just, that doesn't just mean it's got more courses. Uh, it just has it has more courses. It has less course overlap than uh, than what the other one does. The CCB that you're talking about. Yeah. The 
Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah, but they're both they're both actually in the top five of the CCV, um, but one is just slightly little, a little bit better than the other one. Other than that, I mean, you're right. You hit it right on the head. It's just they're not in ranked very often, uh, and when they are in ranks, you pretty much don't use them because you already have another one that's probably a little bit higher, a little bit better than that one. So I mean, they they hold their own. There's they're they're not bad at all, but uh, they're, they're nothing to write home about. I don't think. Yeah, before we get to gliders, um, you know, I, I was kind of hoarding these. I think I had something as, as high as like 12 cart tickets. And I was like eyeing to put them on the Grand Bad Wagon because it looks cool and it's kind of, it's kind of wide. It's just not super wide, uh, so I don't want to get anyone confused. But to me, like I, I was like eyeing that one. I was eyeing this pink dozer. I was eyeing, uh, I don't have the r- Rombi Runner, but I was like, what if it comes out? Can I, what if I got that? And then I was like, hey, if they, if they buff this uh, surf sailor, I need it for ranked. I'll go ahead and throw the tickets on that. Like I was ready to throw these tickets on like one of these awesome new carts. And then uh, in ranked, uh, none of them were uh, on top shelf, but this black Turbo Birdo um, was. And so, you know, I took it to level six uh, and uh, I've been very pleased with its, um, it's covered. So, you know, for me, uh, Tabor, thank you for putting together the list. Thanks for uh, working so hard to do that. It helps in making these decisions. It's not the widest card. That's really the only knock I have against it. Nintendo does seem to like black items a little bit more. Black is the new black. It's kind of like what, I, what I've been saying here in that, you know, you think about um, Black Yoshi having as much value as it had before. We have Black Sail. Black rate sale. We have the black dozer, both as number, you know, number ones. Uh, you know, I think from that perspective, now we have this black turbo Berto. Black items, for whatever reason, uh, t- tend to have some interesting, very peaked uh, um, value, and it's 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 interesting that it's also coming through on this cart that literally no one has. I don't even know how. I think I got it in a freebie because uh, I did not want to pull on that pipe, but um, it's an interesting one there. Um, I hope they bring it back, but I wonder if they kind of treat it like a like Black Yoshi and kind of reserve it from people. All right, uh, take us into who got buffed for the gliders, Tabor, now that we, um, we're coming up on one full hour. Yeah, uh, so not as many gliders total as we had on the, uh, on the carts, uh, but kind of sticking with it, Luigi Painter got a lot of buffs, Painster got a lot of buffs, and staying with that, Flying Easel got a lot of buffs. Again, that kind of holds true to the whole theory about two tours ago, those items are what's going to be hit, you know, hit the most in terms of the buff. So all of those were two tours ago during the Paris tour. Uh, those all came out and those got the most. But Flying Easel got four. Uh, Polka Dot Mantic Glider got three. Uh, for those people that uh, went into the Special Pipe last tour and uh, was able to get the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Polka Dot Manta Glider, then, you know, you're rewarded with getting uh, some extra so i don't think that was in the pipe i think that was actually a a pack it was the regular yeah no that was a week two pack thank you um uh and then those that got two were the 8-bit fire flower the glinting glider star spangled glider sunny surf master and regular surf master all of those got two um the ones there that stand out 8-bit fire flower now has 20 non-city courses which is crazy there uh, and uh, the regular Surfmaster already is up to 18. Uh, and the Surfmaster really d- got it, um, I believe, was uh, debuted during the Sydney tour, so really not too long ago. And then it uh, looks like we've got 12 different gliders that got one buff. Uh, again, sticking with the 8-bit theme, 8-bit Bullet Bill got one more. Uh, now still, and that was a non-city that it was added to, so it now has 19 with zero cities. Uh, Black Great Sale continues to... Sh- excuse me, oh. continues to shine in this game, now has 23 non-city courses, two cities for a total of 25. Uh, and as you can see, it did retain its number one status. Black Tobing Balloons um, got one buff, and we're going to remember that one because we're going to revisit that. That's going to be a part of an important stat later on in this uh, in this video. Um, Bright Balloons got one. Calico Parafoil, which a lot of people kept an eye on, got one. Fair Flyer, which is one of the OG <laughs> ones from the very first tour of the game during the New York tour uh, did get one buff. I don't know if that really does anything. It's got 10 cities and eight non-cities. So, I mean, great if you have it and have it high for that one city it was given. Uh, Rose Parafoil got one. Silver Manta Glider got one. Snow Crystals and Starry Great Sail got one. Both Rose Parasol and Silver Manta Glider both have 19 non-cities with a handful of city tracks along with it. 
Super Mario Kart Glider has 19 and got one, and Tropical Glider has 19 and got one. Uh, again, all of these all have at least one city track, with the exception of the 8-bit Bullet Bill. Uh, that doesn't have any, but uh, some but some good ones on this. I think there's some good ones on this list, even though there's not a there's a few of them. Well, actually, looking at this, it looks like there's quite a few of the top 15 ones on here. So those have done nothing but just strengthen those and keep them uh, higher on the list, if not staying strong where they are. Yeah, you know, my many of them might be cities. I, I don't know. Um, anytime you have an RT and also a T and a R and a like, there's just a lot of uh, tracks to hand these freebies out. But yeah, I mean, uh, the rich get richer. Uh, you know, I think when uh, the one thing that kind of stands out to me is they're they're definitely building up the value of these eight bit items. Um, so you know, for for what it's worth, like there has to be an 8-bit pipe coming. Um, I, I agree with you there. Um, it wasn't this tour, obviously. <laughs> um, but it is something that, you know, for whatever reason, they keep they keep buffing it. Um, my uh, Gold Pass only account, I had this 8-bit bull bill, and it's just been coming in clutch. I, it's ridiculous. It's almost like a uh, Black Rate Sale light. Um, so, uh, but that great Black Rate Sale, man, that is such an awesome glider like i if i can get five glider tickets uh, out of my daily selects this week i'm, I'm gonna take it to seven and uh it, it will put me over the top it's like crazy for acr um and i think it would just it, like it, it feels like 10 gaps in my uh in my inventory so awesome glider there i won't uh take too much more away from you there but uh silver Manta glider obviously come in clutch there too so talk a little bit about the algorithm each time i think we're kind of over that uh we we mentioned this ccv that's the course coverage value this is this one's my personal favorite it shows you the um, the item and and how many other top shelf items it shares with it as an average and um so it's, again we're not just looking at um you know being in ranked and and it's it's coverage if you just want to make decisions based off of pure coverage look at the buffs you know it literally says that number there but the algorithm takes a little bit more into account. You know, we start to see some of these same tracks coming up and over and over again um, as part of ranked, as part of, uh, and that's obviously takes a lot of um, the stock there versus maybe a uh, Rock Rock Mountain where if you have that item, I mean, you haven't seen it in ranked in, in geez, probably, probably over a year. Um, so we probably won't get into more of this, but the algorithm takes into consideration a number of, of factors. Um, and we just reevaluated that. So uh, that was, I think, uh, last tour that we, we kind of made a tweak. And it was the first time in, geez, what was it, uh, eight, eight or nine months. So um, hopefully we do that again every six months or so just to get a better understanding of where the skills and, and how they line up. But, I mean, ultimately, um, this tour is a lot less uh, <laughs> newsworthy than last tour because uh, a lot of staying put, as you can see here, the one big change upward would be Shy Guy Ninja up two spots to number four. <clears throat> he is a force to be reckoned with. He he is somebody that, I mean, I, I'm now you know squatting on a couple um, driver tickets, and he's not, he's not very helpful this tour for all cup ranking. Um, you know, you might be able to use him for for ranks next week, but I mean, other than that, like he's not really helpful. But I am I, when I need to, I will be pulling the trigger to take him as high as I possibly can. So. Excited about that. That'll be a fun day. That's for sure. But we still have my man, King Bob on Gold. He's in the pipe. If you don't have him, um, definitely worth getting. But ultimately, um, you know, you have Nabbit, Dry Bones Gold uh, there at two and three. Pink Old Peach holding down number five. Now, Peach Wedding uh, dropped down two spots. She's number six, um, which I think is completely fair. Some of her tracks I've been noticing uh, have been falling to a couple coin box drivers between the the other wedding item which would be mario tuxedo or king bob bomb gold so that's tough that's going to happen really any driver that doesn't have um uh like a, a, an awesome skill is going to continue to lose value eventually um they're they're, they're rarely going to get more courses which it's actually ironic we, we didn't really talk about this at the point where i was thinking about but um i noticed on um cheap cheap island t i saw dry bowser and then I didn't see him on the buff. So um, I kind of just want to mention that, you know, I, uh, I forget what cup it was. I don't think it was the Dry Bowser Cup, but it might have been now that I'm thinking about it. Um, ultimately, though, just kind of want to, you know, mention to people for, because this is something I still fully don't understand is um, 
if a if a cup falls, that that driver is is uh, boosted, and then from what I understand, the third cup in gets items boost uh, boosted as well. Tabor, do you want to kind of clear this up? You know, especially starting with me. Yeah, I I'm gonna have to look this up because I always get these confused. But one of the so <clears throat> yeah, you're correct. One of the cups, the spotlight items from week one, it will boost either the first or the second or the third cups. And then the week two spotlight items will boost either the first or the second or the third um, courses of each of each cup. Sorry, I said that wrong. The, four, the first, second, or third courses of each cup. And so let me, uh, let me check this real quick. I think we got... While you look so that up, Chris, I'll just finish up the list. Rosalina Swimwear at 7, Lackadoo Party Time at 8, Mario Halloween holding down number 9, Black Yoshi at 10, we have Peach Explorer at 11, Penguin Luigi at 12, Peach Vacation at 13, Penguin Toad at 14, and then Gold Cooper Free Running at 15. So if so for instance, right now, <coughs> week one, we have Mario Baseball, we have um, Pinch Hitter, and we have the Home Field Glider. Um, and so those are going to either be the favored or favorite course of every second course of each cup. So, for instance, ranked this week um, is the Mario Cup, and that and the second course of the Mario Cup is Chaco Mountain. So, if any wherever any of those would fall on Chaco Mountain, you boost them up one level, which means if they're a middle shelf, then they're going to become a top shelf. If they're a bottom shelf, or if they're not on the list at all, they're going to become a middle shelf. So they're not necessarily always going to be a top shelf, but they move up one spot uh, from where they would normally be. So uh, just keep that in mind. And um, and then week two spotlights, all of those six spotlights that we talked about earlier in the video, those are going to be in every third cup, excuse me, in every third course of each cup, those are going to move up one spot from where they normally would be. So middle shelf will become top shelf or not normally on a shelf will become middle shelf. Uh, one of the two and just for that tour so you know if uh if, if i still need coverage for cheap cheap islands t dry bowser may not be there next time it comes back around so um just good to keep in keep in mind uh the buffs are are actually long lasting continuous buffs that will be tied to that driver forever and Smart. this is why sometimes you see it you see a dissociation between the two because like in every tour the newer course is often on there twice like la laps three is actually on here twice during this tour and if you look at the top shelves of each one of those they're different and the difference lies on which cup that they were which course they were in of that cup and which ones had a boost or not so if it, it might seem weird because you're like you don't have any top shelves for la laps three on the ranked cup but then you go later on and you do have some top shelves and you're like, wait a minute, why don't I have so many over there? It's all about the spotlight boost. It's, it's affecting one, but not the other one. Yeah. I think like Mario Sunshine's on that, uh, that track and then like funky is on like the T version. Yeah. It's, it, uh, it's crazy. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, that's that it's a fun way to make the items there in the pipe look more uh, enticing than they are, but the buffs stick to those. That's going to help you out. But, uh, Tabor talk to us about the top 10 carts. Yeah, so as Steadfit mentioned, you know, all of these are really not as exciting as what it was last tour, but we had all kinds of different changes, and honestly, you shouldn't see a lot of drastic changes within each one tour. We don't want one tour to completely dominate and reshuffle these entirely. This is really how it should be, just a few minor changes here and there, and then those minor changes eventually over time become big changes as, uh, you know, momentum goes up here. But as you can see, the first, second, and third spots – those maintained, those stayed the same. Black Dozer still the number one. Crawley Cart still the number two. And I was just checking this, and uh, the the difference of the score because I have a raw score between the two has um, has drastically gotten wider. Black Dozer is pulling away from the rest of these. So Black Dozer is not just number one; it's number one by quite a bit. Uh, and then um, both uh, two, three, and four, and five, and six are actually really close together. Uh, it just so happens that these are the rankings. So Crawley Card still the number two. Happy Ride still the number three. Wild Pink did move up one spot to number four. While Rose Queen ended up falling, those two flip flopped. Uh, Rose Queen's now five. Six and seven stayed the same. Black Turbo Birdo, Purple Bunny are six and seven. 
Gold Chief Charger rose up two spots from number 10 to number 8. Uh, Off-Roader did move down 1 to 9, and Rambi Runner moved down 1 to 10. Sorry, Kevin. And then uh, 11 through 15, uh, A Wild Black is uh, now 11. And let me check this. A uh, Wild Black actually didn't move up one spot. It was 12 last tour, and now it moved up to 11. Uh, Cheap Snorkel is 12. It actually moved down one from 11 to 12. Jade Hop Rod actually moved up two from 15 to 13. Um, Rose Taxi moved up four. It's a new one on our top 15. I don't believe it's ever been top 15 before. It's now number 14. And Gilded King, which is a fan favorite out there, a lot of people hated to see it falling out of the top 10, actually moved down two more spots to uh, number 15. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, this tour, uh, I don't know, this is probably a good topic to bring up for our upcoming podcast, but um, one of the strategies I took is Black Dozer was uh, was really good for me and, and my inventory, so I, I triple uncapped it. Another one that was really good, I had to kind of pick between the Silver Star shoot and a couple of the gliders. I ended up doing that. Uh, Black Dozer has a lot of ties with the Silver Star shoot. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, DK summits. There's uh, a good example would be Chaco Mountain. Um, the, the one that's in ranked this week, I'm using Black Dozer and Silver Star shoot. And then I realized I was doing like Maple, uh, Maple Treeway with that combo. It's just like they're tied together quite a lot. Do you like tying? Again, you don't have, you can just say, hey, I have an opinion that it's going to take longer than two minutes. But um, do you ever uh, get items that are tied together or do you kind of like to diversify your portfolio and not have too much value kind of tied together? Uh, another example would be a lot of the Rosalina Swimwear. Uh, I'm sorry, Rosalina Ice World. Um, I think the T version and like the regular have kind of the same um, with, with this uh, Black Dozer Silver Star. Do you like having that those value tied? I mean, honestly, no. As as a as a gold pass only, you know, I have pretty restricted resources of what I can use, and I want to, you know, ideally, I would want a level six or a level seven driver, cart, and glider on everything, but I wouldn't want to see like an overlap because whenever I see an overlap, I kind of feel like I wasted a resource. I want them to kind of just be separate so i only have a level six or seven on this course and then all the other ones are smaller and i only have a level six or seven on this course because the other ones are smaller and i know it doesn't give you as many options but it helps me to kind of feel like i made the right choice because this is really going to dominate this course and this is where i wanted to focus and then this other one that i also took to level six or seven is going to dominate another course i don't want them to have so many different overlaps that there was no reason for me to max one over the other yeah i would agree with that what i'm referring to is um a cart and a glider having like a lot of overlap with each other oh i understand sorry um no i mean i you want that i mean you want you if, if you have two different ones that go together on a lot of different courses which there's a stat on my spreadsheet that you can uh, you can choose a driver and it will tell you which carts or gliders are the best which ones have the most number of courses with that driver and that way if you're really all in on pink gold peach you can then see which carts and which gliders are best associated with pink gold peach to uh, to maximize it so that way if you have a pink gold peach top shelf odds are you probably also have this one and this one for carts and gliders that you can go with so yeah i mean you want you want that overlap you want to be able to, be able to kind of uh have a have a cluster or a group that you can always count on on these different courses i love that i didn't know you had that that's awesome i'll have to check that out thanks thanks for mentioning that all right, good. Um, so I, I think the, the other takeaway is I had is, you know, I, I wouldn't say that there's very much. I mean, you, you kind of saw a drop in some of these um, really, you know, uh, popular cards. You think about the Off-Roader, the Rambi Rider, the, the Rose Queen. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, we, I always feel like sometimes when we see something new on here, I'm like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to make sure that this is here to stay. Wild Black, Black to Roberto, Purple Bunny, like they're here to stay. Like they're not going away. Um, yeah, I guess you know it's kind of one of those things where you still, you're still kind of holding on for you know the kind of my thought process is you know I remember like you know sports careers you you're thinking to yourself like oh yeah T Terrell Owens is still good you know and you're just like like these players in your mind like that you still think that they're really really good like a good example right now AJ Green like he's like he was a blockbuster trade to the Cardinals but he's also like you know forty years old so you're like. You know, how much of it is like, 
a past uh, assessment or a past value on somebody versus like what they are right now. Now, what's cool about Mario Kart Tour is that, you know, these same tracks get circulated in, so no one's going to like lose value. But um, I think when it comes to understanding, um, you know, wh where these new guys come into the play, like you have to, you have to take them pretty serious. Good. And for the gliders, for top 10 gliders, we still have Black Great Sail at number one and Dry Bowser Umbrella at number two. Uh, I'm curious to see if they're still neck and neck or uh, if one has, if, if Black Great Sail has pulled away substantially now that it's gotten some buffs and been ranked. But um, number one, two, and then with three, we have the Silver Manta Glider. Um, great one there. Silver Starshoot, a personal favorite, number four. It's a one up one. This was a big jump. This was the 8 bit Fire Flower um, up to number five. Yeah, the Sunset b Balloons, unfortunately, fell down two spots. Same with Calico Parafoil at number six and seven. Strawberry Donut went up two. This is a big one for all cup ranking. Um, uh, Dragon Wings has seen better days. Number nine on our list, down two spots. And then uh, same with the Gold Crane, number 10. It's the last of the coin gliders on the top 10. I wonder if it's going to drop. I don't know. But uh, we have... We don't, we're starting to see all those coin gliders. I mean, there's a while there where we had like five or six coin gliders in our top 10. And it is the last, the remaining one. Um, and then we have Bright Balloons at 12, at 11, uh, Silver Bells at 12, 8-Bit Star at 13, Spider Glider at 14, and then Mario Super Mario Kart Glider at 15. Tabor, what's your, what are your thoughts on the gliders? Um, <clears throat> looking at the, the top two, um, again, uh, these two are still pretty interchangeable, both Black Great Sail and Dry Bowser Umbrella. Uh, there's about a like a 1.3 point difference between the two. It was what it was much less than that last tour. So Black Great Sail is slowly pulling away from Dry Bowser Umbrella, especially since Black Great Sail got a buff. Uh, Dry Bowser Umbrella did not. Uh, that helped it a lot. But, um, you know, again, all those top five are, I think, are all fan favorites, really top six. Okay, I think, like, you could say the top ten. They're all fan favorites. I mean, everybody loves all these. They're, everybody has an argument about why one is better than the other one. And I just want to continue to preface these lists that you're looking at, is that if something is not in a top 15 list, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad glider. Because, again, according to your inventory, you might have another glider that's much better for use for you than any of these. Either you don't have some of these or you have them at low levels or, or whatever the case may be. So just keep in mind that this, please take these lists at a grain of salt. These are not like the definites on here, but uh, very few of these gliders will get worse. And the same is true for drivers and carts. Whenever we go from one tour to the next, these things are not usually getting worse. We're not taking buffs away. We're not taking ranked courses away. It's just that other items are getting better. And so they're passing these items. That some items are staying stagnant while others are getting better. So uh, just because it looks like some of these are going down, they're really staying put, but they're being passed. That's really what's happening. Um, but I mean, Strawberry Donut has a big argument. This tour, it's being used a lot in, uh, in the ranked, on the six ranked courses. So that has an argument about where it is. Silver Star Shoot always does well. Black Raid Sale, is, I think, has one ranked course this week. So there's some good ones on here. And it's a little bit more of a reshuffle than we saw in the drivers and cards. Yeah, you know, I, I like black and gold, and black and gold has been on the top 10. But right now it's silver and gold, uh, silver and black. I mean, you're thinking uh, maybe we've got a Raiders fan um, running the show back there at uh, the headquarters of, of DNA. Um, Tabor, so talk to us a little bit about the top movers and shakers. This is a new category that we're going to be talking about here Tell, take us away yeah so uh so i had a little bit of a request and as i thought about it more i thought this was just a great speaking point we don't have to spend a lot of time on this but this is just purely speculation on uh, what we think might happen from here on out but what you're seeing here is these three different lists one's drivers one's carts and one's gliders and these are all about my rankings from one tour to the next so when you see an item on here and it says previous rank this is what their current rank was on my list during the last tour and then when you see new rank it's what their current rank is during on my list during this tour and then the highlighted green is the positive change the the, the improvement that it's made from last tour to this tour so these are the most improved drivers, most improved carts, most improved gliders. These are ones that might not necessarily be on the top 15, 
but have been moving in the background. They might be in the 70s, they might be in the 20s, they might be in the 40s. We don't know what, you can see the, 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 uh, the numbers here for sure. But as you can see on most improved drivers, Luigi Painter moved the most from 45th to 31st. And we saw all the buffs that it had, and we see that it's in some rank this week, and we saw some improvements that it's made. So it kind of makes sense that it's really gonna be going up. Uh, and so again, that's I think that's just kind of one to watch. Uh, it's not in the top 15. We didn't talk about it really other than buffs, but it's one to watch because it's it's moving up uh, pretty pretty fast. Builder Toadette also moved up eight spots, but again, it's only in the 60s and 50s, so it's not any, any threat right now to where it might end up going. Um, and then you can see the rest of the most improved drivers there. Most improved carts, uh, again, sticking with that, uh, the Luigi Painter, the Painster moved up 14 spots. Sunny Surf Sailor moved up, excuse me, 15 spots for Painster. Sunny Surf Sailor moved up 14 spots. Lime T Coop and Orange Streamliner moved up 13. So we've got some movers and shakers uh, on this list. The the Mark II is, notice, is uh, pretty notable because it moved up from 29 to 20. It's kind of knocking on the door of the top 15. Same thing is true with Sakura Quickshaw, moving from 30 to 21. Uh, so again, we've got a few of them, few of them that we just need to be keeping an eye on for what might possibly happen in the future. And then most improved gliders on here, uh, black tobium balloons, which again is another one that we'll be talking about soon. It moved up huge. It moved up from 42 to 27, and a lot of it has to do with the buffs. It's used and ranked a ton this tour, uh, and so it's got some uh, good things going for it. Surf Master moved up 10 spots. Flying Easel moved up nine spots. Um, and a, another notable one is the Chocolate Banana Crepe moved from 30 to 26. Silver Bells moved up from 15 to 12. So anyway, these are the ones that moved the most. There's a lot of other ones that actually fell back or some other ones that stayed put, but these are the, the, the top movers and shakers uh, from last tour to this tour. Yeah, I won't add too much to that. I will say, uh, I, I do think like it is good to keep track of some of this stuff, like some that uh, stick out to me, like with the Surf Master uh, or the the Mark II, like the, those are some of that that thirty to twenty, like that might be the some of the hardest jumps to, to make. Um, sure. Versus, you know, move, you know, another one would be like the Grand Bad, Bad Wagon um, went up ten spots, but it went from you know sixty eight to fifty eight. Like at that point in time, who who cares really? I mean, I'm sure it's just a move, you know, shifting a little bit, but. Moving from 28 to 20 or you know, 29 to 20, like that's a pretty substantial move for that Mark II as an example. But other than that, um, for sake of tie ball, I'll move forward. Um, we'll kind of talk about the eight All Cup ranking MVPs. Of course, you got uh, the baseball items there with 12. You had the pinch runner, the home field runner, and the gold home field runner. Uh, glider, sorry, not runner. Um, and then you have Mario baseball, of course, at number, with 10 there. So these interest these next two interesting drivers, uh, both Birdo Black and Fire Rosalina with nine, not being a baseball item, that's a lot. Um, you get the cleanup hitter with nine, of course it's uh, it's a baseball item. Toadette Explorer with eight, that's a lot for a Toadette Explorer. And, and actually, I saw it on your list for the uh, biggest movers and shakers. That's pretty crazy that uh, it's got an eight to this tour. It doesn't necessarily stand out, but I guess it's because of the Chaco Mountains and. Couple other explorer type of uh, tracks there, and then you have see the eight bit bullet bill uh, with eight tracks there. Um, as for the number of items uh, that I'm sorry, the the items that have seven tracks for the all cup ranking, and and Tabor just to clarify, uh, these don't include buffs. Uh, I'm sorry, just like temporary. Um, buffs. Yeah, these do not these do not include any of the spotlight uh, spotlight boosts or any of the um, cup boosts. So, uh, so I did change the, the, the formula though, because I only had, if a course repeated during a tour, I only had it including it once. Someone pointed that out to me in one of the chats or one of the comments, I believe, in, a, in our previous video. So I changed that. And if something does repeat, it does count it twice now, but it does not include any of those temporary tour spotlight boost or cup boost because there's no way to keep a track of that since it's just a, a temporary thing so these are should be more accurate but it's not completely accurate from where uh, some people would see it yeah it's just a common question i guess so i wanted to cover that um but nabbit king babam rose uh pauline rose and then peach explorer all with seven tracks i know i'm using R nabbit again it's been a while he and uh lack party time it's been a while since i've been able to use them 
uh, for all cup ranking. So I'm pumped about that. It's already, I'm having a blast on this toad circuit. Uh, then we have happy ride, sunny surf sailor, uh, the silver start, uh, spangled flyer the, and the head honcho all with seven and then the black raid sail the so star spangled flyer sorry star spangled glider and the starry great sail both uh, all three of those with seven i will say i was kind of coming into this tour uh just coming up on i think I came into the tour with nine uh cart tickets and i was excited to maybe take uh the crawley cart to 10 but if i do end up going for this all cup uh push to to potentially a top 10 top 15 um i think i might shift them i think i might go with this happy ride uh it does wonders for me um coverage wise and so i might triple uncap that instead of a crawly cart just to help me on this specific push but i mean they're both you know number two and number three on our list so you can't go wrong there but um that's kind of how i'm seeing this list and that's some of some of the uh, investments that i'm making based on what i see here um, talk to us a little bit about the multiple use ranked items Tabor. Yeah, so the last couple of tours have been kind of ho hum on this graphic. Uh, we had a few of them where they were just two. You know, there was a couple items that were used twice and two different things. So again, keep in mind that we have three ranked courses this week. We have three ranked courses next week. That's a total of six for the tour. So what I did is I kind of like organized all the data and I saw which drivers, which cards, which gliders appear more than once in a ranked course and so these are anything that's being used two or more times and as you can see on the drivers mario baseball is actually used three different times three out of the six uh, ranked courses mario baseball is a top shelf item for one two of them are for level one and if you happen to get him and take them all the way to level six you can actually use them in a third one uh, donkey kong snes is used twice fire rosalina mario chef builder luigi those are all used twice as well these are the only ones that are used two or more times. Uh, all the rest of them, uh, all the rest of the drivers that could be used as a top shelf um, are only appear one time in one of the courses. Uh, cards is a little interesting. Pinch hitter, again, a new cart is used twice as a level one and actually twice as a level six. It's being used four out of the wow. six different times. So again, if you get pinch hitter and you have some tickets to spare and you really want to dominate this uh, ranked uh, to ranked ranked cups for this tour, then you could take them all the way to level six, and you could use that cart in um, in four out of the six uh, ranked courses. The Cal Streamliner is twice. Sunny Surf Sailor is twice. Uh, it is a one and one for level one and level three. Rose Taxi is the same, and and Gold Cheap Snorkel is a one for level one and a one for level six. And then gliders. Uh, I, I kind of mentioned this, Strawberry Donut is used three times, all of them are level ones. Black Tobing Balloons is also used three times, all of them are level ones. Home Field Glider is used three times, two is level one, and one is a level six. So again, Strawberry Donut and Black Tobing Balloons could really help you out since they're just level ones. If you've got them, you can really, again, for me personally, I have limited resources as a gold pass only. So if I'm going to put a ticket on an item this tour, I want it to help me in more than just one course. And these are some options where it would help you in multiple courses, barring you don't have any other items that are already higher than those. So you just kind of need to check your inventory, check your courses and see where you are. Uh, Silver Starshoe is used twice. Lake Tricolor is used twice. Home uh, Gold Home Field Glider, which will be available in the special pipe is used twice. And Chocolate Banana Crepe is also used twice. Awesome. I thought you did a good job summarizing that. Now, take us into what tracks or what items are unlocked when they get to certain levels, because we don't see this uh, from the, the naked eye. Yeah, so again, as normal, whenever a new course comes on, there's not usually any, if not, there's not usually many, if not any, uh, L6, L3 or L6 uh, DKGs that can be used. Same as that is true for LA Laps 3. There is no extra bonus um, DKGs that you can use on that. Uh, N64 Choco Mountain, if you've got Black Yoshi or Nabbit or Shy Guy Pastry Chef at level six, those will come, those will show up and you can use them um, as some bonus uh, top shelf coverage. For the carts, Rose Taxi is a level three, Gold Chief Snorkel and Gold Clanky Cart, and Koopa King are all level six. So if you have any of those that high or can get them that high, they will benefit you there. Ninja Scroll is a level three, Banana Wingtip, Pink Gold Paper Glider, and Treasure Map are all level six as well for that one. Uh, rounding off the Mario Cup, the Mario Circuit 3 RT, we have a couple supers there available to you in case you don't have any high leveled high ends. 
Red Cooper Free Running is level six, and Toad Pit Crew is uh, excuse me. Red Cooper Free Running and Toad Pit Crew are both level threes, so they'll show up there and are some good possibilities again if you don't have any high uh, high ends. Uh, for carts, Red Bee Dasher is a level three, Swift Jack is a level three, Red Turbo Yoshi, another super, is a level three, and Pinch Hitter is a level six. It's one of those that I had mentioned uh, in the previous slide. And then uh, New Year's 2020 is a level three for the gliders. Silver and Gold Hearts is a level three, which will be available in the uh, special pipe. And 8-Bit Bullet Bill is a level six. Those will be available to help you on the last course of the Mario Cup. Going into the Toadette Cup, we do have some options here for the LA Laps 3RT. Mario Baseball is a level six, Pinch Hitter is a level six, and Home Field Glider is a level six. So those will help you there in case you have got some of those and want to uh, put a lot of tickets on. Cheap Cheap Island R, which was introduced last tour, did come back around this tour. It was not a ranked course last tour. We did the normal one, we did the T variant and the normal variant. Now all of a sudden for those people that um, Put a lot of tickets or put some characters had some high had some top shelves on the r we you'll uh, be able to put that to use there are no drivers on this that are l3 or l6 sunny surf sailor is l3 and sunny surf master is l6 and finally maple treeway t one of the fan favorites out there a lot of people love that love that uh, that course cat peach is a level three mario halloween is a level six holiday king is three festival cart and uh, pumpkin cart are both level six and there is no l3 or l6 uh, gliders for Maple Tree Way Team. Awesome. Well, Tabor, man, it's uh, twelve thirty uh, our time, and uh, I'm I'm exhausted. Uh, the thought of uh, editing and, and getting this out the door is going to take a little bit of effort, but we made it. In fact, I think we're breaking our current record for longest episode. So, thank you for sticking around. Thank you so much for your help, Tabor. Thank you for the work you do. Also, if you are still in the chat and you have not left yet, please get out your typewriter and just say thank you, Puffton11, 11, uh, 11, 7, 11 ty 7 25, 64, whatever it might be. Puff has done a phenomenal job of helping get the Discord server up and running, helping me out with my membership. So just to twin, uh, please give her hype. Uh, she's phenomenal. She's done a great job helping me get this off the ground. So thank you, Puff. Um, thank you, Marco. Thank you, Tabor. Appreciate all of your help. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, if you haven't liked this video, please do so. I really, really appreciate it. We're on to doing some bigger and better things. Not that this is not bigger and better, but we are taking this to the next level and we're going to have some fun doing it. We're going to build a tighter community. So thank you so much for everything you guys do. Everyone in the premiere, thank you for showing up. Uh, appreciate that and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer celebration. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.